Hello everyone, I don't know how much time I have because, well, technically our house guests are supposed to have left today, but sadly, the buses said, oh, we're sorry, our all of our seats are filled, we have to do it tomorrow. So, I have this nice little window and I'm hoping to just do this little thing. So, today everyone, I am defending Home Alone 3. That's right everyone. For some reason, even a news station, a news station did it, and one of my news stations near me, or basically they were looking at some tally thingamabob, and you also have the nostalgia critic who also dissed this freaking movie. So, <clears throat> I like to say, I love this movie. This movie, I really enjoy it. I actually would watch it every Christmas. I actually watched it yesterday. Even though I did have to pack up a TV, so I missed like the last half of it. But heck, I already know what happens in the movie. But anyways, the thing is, is that why in the world will you guys actually bash this movie? I mean, there's, right now there's five Home Alone movies. I didn't see the fifth one yet because stupid ABC family wants to keep it to its own self. So I didn't even see the fifth one, but I saw the fourth one. Even though I didn't get to see it on TV because they kept on hippity hopping saying uh, it's going to be on this night or oh it's going to be on this night or this night. And it got completely crazy. And then they said it's coming out. Yeah, the, the video VHS of it is coming out. And then they actually said, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, never mind. We're not going to release it out this year. We're going to release it next year, which is like, what? Yeah, so they waited until the year after they actually had it on TV to release it, which was kind of... What's even worse is that, yeah, this one, Home Alone 4 or Home Alone... One second. That's what I thought it was called. It was Home Alone Taking Back the House. That one... And it had a freaking year to fix it, but... That movie, I have to say that one's the worst Home Alone movie I've seen. For people who are like, Home Alone 3's horrible. It's like, not really. If you looked at Home Alone, Take It Back to House, guess what they did? They took the freaking TV version of it and put it on the freaking video. That's it. That's all they did. They didn't say, okay, let's get out the TV pauses. Let's make it smoother. Yeah, the TV pauses are in that one. I haven't seen the DVD version, but as soon as I get the DVD version, maybe I'll change my thought on it. But for now, my gosh, that one is the worst one. Yeah, that's for Home Alone 3. I don't get why it's really a bad movie. I mean, it technically can stand alone, and I don't really know what the hell everyone's like. It was a bad movie! And I'm like, okay, so... Let me get this straight. Instead of Alex, you want Kevin McAllister to come back, right? But at this point, guess how old Kevin McAllister is? He's 17 years freaking old. How the frick we have a 17-year-old being Home Alone movie? I mean, technically, that that defeats the purpose. Because he's not a kid anymore. He's a teenager. And teenagers can't actually live in a house alone, technically. So it's kind of like, yeah, I don't really get... Well, anyways, instead of actually figure out new ways to say, oh, crap, we left our son, they came up with the idea of let's get a new family. And it's a similar house, technically. I think they might actually be still McAllister's. I'm maybe not. Yeah, I didn't really get that part. But heck, if they're not McAllister's, that's good, right? So anyways, basically you have a brother... You have an older brother named, yeah, I have to look at what I just wrote. I mean, geez. Shoot, where is it? You have the older brother named Stan. Really, Stan? I don't think it was Stan. It was something else. Oh, well. So, anyways, yeah, you have the older brother named Stan. You have an older sister named Molly. Technically, Stan takes the place of Buzz. 
and Molly takes the place of at least two of Kevin's sisters, so it's smashed into one. This time, you don't have a freaking cousin who's like, I went to bed. Yeah. You're forced to sleep with me, and I drink lots of water so I can pee. Which, yeah, I mean, one thing that would have been cool is maybe they just spin off with that stupid kid. But, yeah, I think they might have actually been the same age, so it doesn't really pan out. But, yeah, that little stupid kid, that little bedwetter, <laughs> he do the third movie. That would be kind of funny. So, when he does the third movie, they forgot his sorry butt. And now, he has to not only defend the house, but he also has to make sure he doesn't wet himself. Which... That's going to be kind of a funny movie, I suppose. Along with a, a movie that actually will be kind of strengthened. Because then he has to grow up a little bit and not be a total idiot and a total kid. And actually learn how to defend his house. And it would be cool to actually see what's on the other side. I mean, he is freaking parents is the cheap uncle and the aunt. Which we never actually seen what their house is. So since we didn't see what their house actually looks like, it would be cool to actually see what they would come up to say, oh, this is what their house looked like. It shows how cheap they are. <laughs> My gosh, that would be funny as hell. Yeah, so it sees how cheap they are. No wonder they have to go over there to their cousin, or I don't even know how they're even related. Yeah, that's the one thing, crazy thing about the first two movies, is that you don't really know how the uncle's really related. So, yeah. I guess it could be brother-brother thing or brother-sister, but either way, it's kind of like, yeah. Well, with that said, basically, it would be cool to actually see the other side, even though it could just shows, oh, yeah, they have a crappy house. No wonder they go in the freaking vacations with his brother. And he actually gets his brother to freaking pay for his family, too, which is kind of crazy. But... Let's get away from the two first two movies and go to the third one. So the third one, you're dealing with Max, who actually stays home because he has chicken pox. New idea. Yeah, it's better than the whole, oh, we go into the vacation and, oh, crap, we forgot our son. It's kind of like, yeah, so you're going to continue this pattern where you have families who forget to get their son and their son's forced to defend their house from burglars. But it's time to have a new spin of things. Not only he has to protect himself from burglars, but so he actually puts the cops into this. Which that's one thing that Kevin didn't do is the fact, oh yeah, he did in the second movie, he did. Actually, yeah, the first and second movie he did, but he did at the very end. This time, you actually just had the kid straight up just call and say, hey, someone broke into that house. I see someone in a house that isn't my neighbor. And of course, you know what happens, is that the stupid burglar got smart and knows how to camo himself and cover his tracks. And then you come to the part of where it's like, he's hanging on the top of the damn ceiling. And look at the freaking, how the police freaking look around. They don't even look to the other side of the washing machine because, heck, for all we know, he could actually just be over there hiding and they're like, oh, oh, oh. They're just looking around. They don't even look actual look beside the freaking dryer so it's kind of like the point of they didn't even analyze their place that well and given it's kind of like you should check and expect the unexpected you would figure that they're like yo this is pre this yeah this is pre freaking batman beyond i mean batman begins where they're like ninjas huh it's <laughs> just straight up look up, which is kind of ridiculous how it's like looking up and yeah, it's like, and the funny part is that the next, the next, next place he takes, he actually does, which he puts it in his own hands. This time he actually has evidence that the neighbors could actually say, yeah, someone's in my, was in our house. Someone took my freaking tape thingy for my answer machine. Someone knocked over my clothes water was spilt from my cat bowl it's kind of like yeah and of course the rug was moved too so i guess they could actually but it was technically alex's reason alex is following that one so it's kind of like yeah <clears throat> 
But this time, the villains, there are four of them. There was four bad guys. And, yeah, this is where freaking Nostalgia Critic was like, oh my gosh, you're so stupid. So, basically, they had a missile chip. And what they were going to do is sell it to Hong Kong. They had a benefactor in Hong Kong who wanted to have that missile chip so they can do something. I don't know. Maybe attack America. Maybe attack North Korea. I don't really know. We didn't get to that point. So what they have to do is just go. They have to hide it from customs because, well, if they just have it in their pocket, they'll freaking freak out. And the freaking monitor will be like, beep, 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 beep. So it's kind of like, yeah, so... They did the smart thing. Instead of being like, let's put it in a briefcase or let's put it in something. They did something very smart. They were like, what's just like it? What looks just like it? And no one have any reason to say, oh my gosh, that's something that they shouldn't have. They found something that was in a freaking toy car and said, it looks just like it. So they replaced it, put it in there. And yeah, I think that was a smart move. Nostalgia Critic was like, man, that was the dumbest thing they could ever do. Which I was... Which I was like, that was a smart move to do. Very, very smart. <sighs> but anyways, there's like lots of things that actually came up for it. Let's see, it's like, for instance... The criminals came up with a smart idea and Alex came up with it too. That the fact that in the daytime, they were in the suburbs, no one's in home. No one's not really at home, so they're able to actually look through the houses with no one being like, Rrr. And what's even funnier is that even in the first movie, you kind of saw the whole Harry and Marv actually did go into a house at daytime. Yeah, and they almost ran over Kevin. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. And of course, side note, the big sister cheats. Yeah, she actually wrote math problems on her freaking shoe. So when the test came, she could look on her shoe. Psh! They added a personal accident with the toilet. Hmm. Yeah. They got a parrot in there. They came up with a remote, which that was funny. I love it. And it's always a quote I always do. And I would always love to ask jamie fox how you feel about your music video being featured in home alone 3 <laughs> that was that's always my favorite scene in home alone 3 they don't even use bb guns in this one which in the first well the first one they used a bb gun the second one chances are he wouldn't have got it in customs let's see oh yeah the other thing is that the fact that they planted scouts so just in case their cover was blown, they had someone who did it. And of course, here's the thing: is that nostalgia critic yet again? I'm yeah, I'm actually talking about him. So he basically says the freaking criminals were dumb as crap picking a freaking remote control car. But no, it's really the old lady, Mrs. Hess, who's really to blame here. Well, the good news is that Mrs. Hess actually stopped a freaking Chinese attack. I guess you could call it. But it comes also to the part of if I am basically have a bag and chances are everyone around me have that same bag. Wouldn't I be smart enough to check to see if that bag is my bag? I think you would do that. Instead, Mrs. Hess, like a total idiot, just took the bag and walked away until, yeah, yeah get this, the reason... Now, the way how she found out is as soon as she went on an airplane or as soon as she actually arrived home from the freaking cab, she noticed her bag, looked in her bag and like, oh, which is kind of like, um, you're the idiot. You didn't check at the check place to see if it's yours. So at least when you look right there, you're like, oh my gosh, this is a road control car. Who had a road control car? Yeah, you could have said that, and then basically you guys switch. You get to have your bread, your stupid shirt, while the freaking bad girl actually gets to have what she wanted. So it's kind of like, yeah, she, the old lady was really the one at fault. I think it was really ingenious what they actually did with the whole hide the missile chip within the, you know, mo control car. 
Oh yeah, and then you had the whole idea of comic book like thought for adults, just the fact of they don't believe him. Yeah, everyone don't believe him until he actually has proof. He almost got proof, but sadly, yeah. And of course, he took a matter to his own hands, and he showed about technology. Yeah, this time we got even more advancements than what <clears throat> Kevin had. I mean, Kevin had the thing, which is kind of funny. In the second movie, you had the hand thingy, which I don't remember what it's called, but heck, I technically wanted one. And I would love it if they refurbish that and make it brand new, like with new technology instead of insert tape, insert batteries. You could make it rechargeable, make it digital. You can download it onto your computer. I think that would be cool. I actually have the step up version of it by default, but the sad part is that it only lasts for five seconds and the battery's been dead for some years now. <clears throat> But yeah, as you can see, that one, and then now they, in the third movie, it's kind of like a big, long commercial. For the third movie, it was basically the Mutinator remote control car that was like, oh, holy crap. That's a good toy. I would get it. Oh, yeah, and one thing I didn't talk about is just the fact that when he was trying to get evidence, you had cat fun. You had bra fun. The fact that you had the cat and he scared it with the remote control car or the fact of... It was he was hiding under the clothes that the bad guy knocked over thus hey look there's some evidence and he basically raced tried to race as fast as he can back home but of course but he took the bra with him just a little bit until it got away the fun part is that he actually mapped the house and what about the TV and phone magic just to save his butt the fact of he had to use a remote control to divert him the long remote control, which was kind of a good idea. And he had a universal remote, which kind of smart. And he also had, you know, his number. And he had a parrot who could actually help him out. Oh, what about this cool thing? It's the fact of this scene where you actually see the remote control car straight up go overhead Ross from Friends. Yes, he actually voiced in there, which I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, sweet air touching speech yeah he did a speech with his rat doris he oh yeah i love the prep song for the whole thing he was getting his house almost ready half ready for them so it was kind of cool yeah i love that song i know it doesn't sound like that but it's close to it like oh wait i got this part Yeah, that's like a little bit of it. But anyways, I love the prep thing. Or what about the gun fake out? The fact that he took a bubble gun, sprayed it black, and put it next to a jacket. So the bad guy would think this is his gun and he picked up the gun by accident. And he got the real gun and throw it in the trash. And of course he had more prep. He had to do some more prep because, well, he had more prep. <clears throat> One thing that was kind of like homage to it is the fact that he had a hole in the floor in the second movie, which everyone loves the second movie, but the thing is, I kind of like what the third movie did. The third movie not only had a hole, he made a hole, but he also covered the hole with a blanket, an actual rug. So the bad guy, which heck if Marv, no Harry, it was Harry. No, it's Marv, sorry. So if Marv actually looked down before he actually walked, he actually could have just jumped over it and then crisis averted. While with Alex here, he basically was smart enough to put a rug over there. And heck, even for more static effect, he actually was there and he gasped saying, <gasps> he's like, I got you, little kid. And he jumped, and he walked on the rug and ah! that was awesome. Smart move. I like that one. That was, that was good. <clears throat> Fireworks, yeah, he did fireworks too. He did a good uh, good job on that. He just figured, planning ahead, just in case if any of them tries to run, where would he hide? And the best place they would hide was actually in an igloo, maybe a kid made. So he lined that up with fireworks and basically sent the parrot out just in case. <laughs> and of course he had a rope. 
Yeah, he had a rope on something. The rope. They had two ropes, actually. The first rope was for. It was kind of laced with the weights, which I thought that was the one I was talking about. But this, the other one, the real one I was talking about was the fact that it actually. Yeah. Um, I, well, anyways, there was like a few ropes things. So there's some homages to it, which was okay. But really. Okay, let me just go with this part. So why you guys hate it so much? Is it because of the girl? You have a girl in Home Alone 3. And she got brutally hurt as if she was a contortionist gone bad. Or what about the fact that Ross? What about Ross? So you guys got pissed off that Ross from Friends got hurt. Is that what happened? Or is it just the fact that all four of them got infected with chicken pox? Yeah, that's funny. That's a funny ending. It's the fact that not only they all got caught, but they got chicken pox from the boy. <laughs> that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. <sighs> of course, it could have been the elderly abuse. The fact that they tied up Miss Hess and basically left the door open so she can perish, I guess. Yeah, so are you guys pissed off about that? Because if you're pissed off about that, but she started it. If she would have looked in the damn bag in the first place, none of this would have happened. And then, yeah, someone would have got bombed. <laughs> Ouch. So it kind of like, yeah, it goes like hand in hand. Of, oh. But, hmm, let's see. Home Alone 3, I think it's a very, very good movie. It's a decent movie. It shouldn't be so scrutinized and said worst Christmas movie ever. It's like, it's not the worst Christmas movie ever. It's very, very good. It's good enough for holidays. And I think it does good for being Home Alone 3 being a Home Alone movie without having Kevin McAllister, which without that, then, yeah, I mean, without that, who would actually go for it? And technically, Home Alone taking back the house be number three? That would be the worst move ever. So, it's good. I'm glad they actually had him. I'm glad they actually had this movie. This movie was very, very good. When I first saw it, it was interesting as heck. And... The punching bag, the punching bag booby trap, funny, or the fact that they actually put glue in mega block wagons and the dude, <laughs> the dude walked into them and now he's stuck with those in them. Uh, or the fact of, yeah, there's just so many of them that was just too good. But. Don't get me wrong. The first two are good. The first two is very, very good. Those were classics. The third one most likely won't ever be truly called a classic because it's away from the first two movies. But I do have to admit, it's a very good movie either way. And if there was something ranked after classics that was good, I think it should be in that. So thank you for listening in this Throwback Thursdays. And everyone remember, Home Alone 3 is not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie at all. The fourth movie is. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the fourth movie is. I mean, did you see the fourth movie? They recast Marv. No, Harry, sorry. They recast Harry. They actually made it so that Harry has a girlfriend. And not only that, but Harry's mom is also a bad guy too. Which is kind of like... Really, really messed up. It really is. It really, really is kind of messed up. So, yeah. I mean, Home Alone 4, unless they actually... Yeah, that's the only, that's the only thing I really have a trouble with. Is that if Home Alone 4 gets rid of the TV breaks in it and make it an actual movie and not a movie made for TV, then I think it actually could have... could rock on its own and be okay. But because of that, I'm like... There's like too much stuff that I'm like, oh my gosh. And... It's just really, it really is, oh my gosh, I mean, it is kind of fun to watch, but it's also a pain to watch because there's freaking TV breaks in it. Well, anyways, I'm going to go and let's hope I get to see the fifth Home Alone movie. I hope it goes on ABC, I hope it comes on ABC very soon. But anyways, I'm going to continue on watching Flash versus Arrow, and looks like I did have enough time to actually do this, so... 
Yay. And for anyone, I will be back on Friday at full power. So stay tuned for that. And eventually I will do the Sideshow Bob one. As long as all, also all the other ones I said prior to this movie I would do. I mean video I would do. So thank you for watching and I am gone. Peace and have a good Thursday.